What's up guys, it's your boy DB, back again with one of these early EA Game Changer reveals, this time for the brand new Emperor's Shuttle. Capital Games have hooked me up with some footage and gameplay, so I'll talk you through what it does, its uses, and so on. Excuse the space bars around the footage, but it was actually provided to me in a strange resolution, so I've keyed out the empty space and filled it with something a little less ugly. Diving into the kit, Aggressive Offensive is the ship's basic. Once fully upgraded, it will deal special damage to one enemy and inflict critical damage down on the target for two turns. Not much to really say about this, so we'll move on to the first special, Emperor's Influence. This move will dispel all debuffs from your target Empire or Sith ally, then they'll recover 50% of their max health and protection. It will also dispel all buffs from the target enemy and inflict buff immunity on all target locked enemies for two turns. This will start on a cooldown and can't be evaded. The first thing that jumps out here is the ability to shut down both Hound's Tooth offensively and defensively. Removing Breach while slapping on some buff immunity would be extremely handy. It sounds like it'll be best using the ship as a reinforcement, giving you time to get some target lock spread around to maximize its effect. The next special is Royal Escort, a move that requires the development of Royal Guard. This'll deal special damage to the target enemy and inflict target lock on them for two turns. Then, the healthiest Empire or Sith ally will also taunt for two turns. This could pair nicely with the B-28 bomber that is incredibly tanky when developed. Also, if you're able to stick it on Imperial TIE while it has foresight to boost your Empire capital, there is more value there too. Now for its unique, battle-tested formation. When maxed out, it'll dispel all debuffs on Emperor's shuttle anytime it takes damage from a target-locked enemy. It'll also grant Empire or Sith allies protection at 20% for two turns when critically hit, or at 40% if they happen to be taunting. This is pretty substantial and really brings the kit together. If the basic hasn't shut down the enemy crits, then you'll gain protection when they hit you with one. Meanwhile, passing taunt around to the healthiest ally will lead to a huge 40% protection up boost. It remains to be seen how effective this will be against the Falcon meta, but it's certainly something I'm looking forward to testing as part of my ongoing series into the fleet game modes. Finally, it's reinforcement ability, Imperial Entanglement. This just confirms my earlier suspicion that this ship is wanted as a reinforcement. When maxed out, it'll gain protection up at 25% and critical hit immunity for two turns. Its Empire and Sith allies will gain offense up for two turns, and will inflict tenacity down on the target enemy for two turns which can't be evaded or resisted. The best part is you can immediately use Emperor's Influence, the anti Houndstooth ability, and get buff immunity on all those target lock ships. Now let's get onto some footage that I've been sent, but don't worry if you don't see it against or working with teams you want to see, my channel is well known for covering fleet and I can promise you I'll get right onto those videos once my test account has access. Okay, it looks like CG are going to showcase against the Mace timeout teams that troubled some shards pre-Falcon. This isn't necessarily a bad thing as these teams are still rampant on younger shards and in territory wars. Having seen Palpatine's ship, target lock would seem to be a priority and sure enough, type basic it is. Okay, hopefully this footage isn't all in one time speed. Okay, no, it looks like we're going to four. Thank Jeebus, or my commentary was going to be incredibly slow. Okay, I'd assume some ability block to minimize the assists from CAD's AoE. Yep, there we go. Hopefully the enemy will pop Vader or the bomber to trigger taunt soon, because we've got to keep that tie safe. And sh well, there we are. Perfect. There's a bite of some time now. Surely next we need buff immunity on Hound's Tooth. Vader can then remove some buffs, stack that TM and shoot again for some nice damage. Okay, sweet. Right, the Emperor has arrived. Time for Emperor's Influence and I'd heal, I'd say Vader here. Bomber's still got plenty of health and still has a bit of protection too. Yeah, it seems they felt the same. Got that breach off too. Right, they've flown in Ahsoka who can actually do some nasty damage in these mace teams and fortunately the AI is one times table simple and didn't do anything about Palpatine's buffs or possibly kill Vader. Right now Vader could possibly finish Bosk off here with his basic but removing Ahsoka's buff may be wiser. Okay, they opted to remove all 5% turn meter and zero buffs on Bosk for some reason. 
A wasted move, but at least Ty finished it off. I'd have gone for Kata or Ahsoka with the Dispel, then finished with Ty personally. Royal Escort would have been a good call next on Ahsoka instead of the basic on fives. This would have kept B28 protected instead of its current dicey situation. Okay, Reaper is in, so time for some course correction. A Dispel on Ahsoka is pretty vital right now after the previous mistakes. Click it. There we are. Right. I'd say finish off a soaker and use Royal Escort as soon as possible to get Taunt on the Reaper. It's a tanky ship and the bomber is looking wrecked. There we go. Nice. Alright, some buff immunity I suppose. Or not. Although to be fair, the battle is a done deal now anyway. You could essentially do whatever you like and win from this point. Go on, any move, don't really matter now. And finished. So yeah, I'm reasonably impressed with the ship's performance and how it has given a use to the likes of the bomber. These mace teams can be a pain in territory wars when you've already got the falcon in use for defense or facing other falcons. I think everyone and their pet doggo has a gear 12 Palpatine by this point, so this ship could offer some great use. Okay, it looks like we're facing Warriors WTF team, another old problem, although I don't see it anymore personally, not once my Hound Silencer was released and then Falcon dropped anyway. Okay, they've gone for Foresight on TIE first. Alright, target lock for Vader now I'd assume. Or we can ability block the guy that's already used his ability, either way. Okay, Palpatine is here. Things aren't looking too great right now, so that heal on Vader would be handy. Okay, we're back in the game. Let's get rid of Cad as soon as possible. He really does have a fantastic ship, which is well worth gearing him up for. Alright, that's him done. Alright, Ghost next as it's knocking on Death's door, then to deal with Hound's Tooth. All right, let's get some more turn meter and defense penetration. Now nah, we're gonna be forced to attack Ahsoka thanks to that early bizarre use of Vader's special that's gonna bite us in the backside as we won't be able to remove Ahsoka's buffs and Bomber is gonna die. Yep, there we go. That's a shame, all this could have been avoided. All right, we're gonna have to fix things again with a Reaper. Okay, they're gonna need to heal Vader, dispel Ahsoka, and then quickly finish her off. Okay, that's done, finally. Wow, they've got a little bit unlucky here with these dodges and resists. Ah, right, now Boba is in. I can't help but think if that first Vader turn didn't go wrong, this would have been over before Boba even had the chance to join. Now they got to deal with him and his counter and his taunt. Wow, I might lose Vader as well, eh? Quite lucky those crits were actually healing the protection. And nice, and finally Houndstooth is gone. But I, I really think that battle could have been a lot quicker than it was. I don't think you'll have any difficulty beating this team, as this was a drawn out battle by using the wrong move at the very beginning. So overall, I really do like this ship. While I don't think it's going to be meta anytime soon or even really challenge the Falcon meta, I do think it's got its uses especially in territory wars and dealing with the likes of the Mace Timeout team which is quite frequently used there. But primarily I think this ship is a sign of things to come. I've already predicted a Sith capital ship will arrive eventually. I had actually expected this month but it doesn't seem like we're actually getting Sith month anymore so 
perhaps March, maybe even April, but eventually we're going to get one. And the Empress Shuttle has just given these ships a new lease of life, so under their own capital ship, they could become a formidable force, especially with an additional ship or two added to the arsenal. That's it for this video guys, I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts and the breakdown on the actual kit itself. I've tried my best to give you some commentary, but I will give you some more direct videos once I get my hands on this ship personally. Until next time guys, we out of here.